Have you ever wondered why there are so many problems on palindromes? It could be with linked lists, trees, strings, numbers, you just name it, right? If you think about it, the concept is very simple. You are given some sequence and it should read the same when you're reading from the front and when you're reading from the back, right? So why there is so much hype about it? Well, if you think about computer applications, then it involves a lot of cryptographic algorithms. There are a lot of palindromic keys and you need these algorithms to identify them. That will help you with your encryption algorithms. Then when it comes to mathematics, there are a lot of connections between these palindromes and prime numbers. So once again, you need algorithms to quickly identify these palindromes, correct? Think about it. Even in biology, there are a lot of DNA sequences which exhibit this palindromic behavior. So once again, you need to have efficient algorithms by which you can identify these patterns, right? And if you think about it, palindromes help to create aesthetically pleasing logos as well. All of these user interface designs, they are symmetrical, right? So they look same if you're reading from the front and if you're reading from the back. So you need all of these palindromic algorithms at a lot of places and it becomes really, really important. That is why I wanted to make a short video on it. So let's see what we can do about it. Hello friends, welcome back to my channel. First, I want to give you a quick overview about what are palindromes and then how can you start to identify them. We will also go over a short code so that you can understand and visualize how this is working in action. We will also look at some sample problems so that it becomes really clear. Without further ado, let's get started. First things first, let us do a quick overview of what is actually a palindrome. So as you might already know, a palindrome is any sequence that will read the same if you go in the forward direction or you go in the backward direction. So what does that actually mean? Looking at our first example, I have this string, right? Race car. Now, if you try to read it from the front, you get R, A, C, E, C, A, R, right? And if you try to read it from the reverse direction, what do you get? Once again, you get R, A, C, E, C, A, R, right? So this is the same. And hence, you can say that this string is a palindrome. It is not necessary that only strings can be palindromes. Numbers can be palindromes too. Take a look at the second example. You have this number, right? Now, if you try to read it from the left, what do you get? 1, 2, 3, 4, and then 4, 3, 2, 1, right? Now, try to read it from the other direction. Once again, you get 1, 2, 3, 4, and then 4, 3, 2, 1. So, this number is also a palindrome. Also notice that the first example has a length of 7 characters, and the second example has a length of 8 characters. And both can be palindromes. If your sequence that has odd characters, that is 7, then you will not find the middle element occurring twice. All of these other elements will occur twice, right? And if your palindrome has a even length, then all of these characters will occur twice, right? Even the middle character. So this is a basic overview of what is actually a palindrome. And notice all of these different strings, they are all palindromes. Similarly, you can find a lot of examples. And it is not necessary that palindromes have to be characters of the alphabet. You can make them with any character. You can make them with special symbols also. Just this property should be true. So this is how you define a palindrome. But coming to algorithms, how do you identify one? For example, I have this string with me, right? Now you have to check if this string is a palindrome or not. The most naive way and the brute force approach will be that you first reverse this string entirely. And then what you will do is you will compare character by character. So you will compare what all characters are you getting. If you are getting same characters all the way up till very end, then yes, this string is a palindrome. If one of the character does not match, then this string will not be a palindrome. So this is a brute force approach. And you know that this will end up taking a lot of time. For example, this only has a length of seven. So you might get around with it, but try to think. If the length is, let's say, 100,000 characters, then what will you do? Will you reverse the entire string and then try to compare one character at a time? That will end up taking so much time, right? So definitely, you need to come up with a better approach. How can you optimize this? The general idea to quickly identify if a given sequence is a palindrome or not is the two-pointer approach. 
Basically, in a two pointer approach, you will take two pointers that are starting at different locations and you move them in different directions. So for this particular example, I have this first pointer that will start from the first character and I have a second pointer which will start from the last character. Now what do you do? Now you have both of these pointers, right? If this string is a palindrome, then it should read the same from both the directions, correct? So just compare the character at the first pointer and at the second pointer. If they are same, that means you are satisfying your conditions for a palindrome, right? So at least this character matches. Now you need to move ahead. So what will you do? You will advance the first pointer by one character and you are going to decrement the second pointer by one character. And once again, just compare both of these characters. Once again, they are same. So you will advance ahead. You will keep on doing this. Once again, you find that we are same and then you will advance one more character. Once again, you will notice that, okay, both the pointers are pointing at the same character. So this is good. Now move one step ahead. Now you will ask me, Hey, do I need to compare again? No. As soon as your first pointer advances ahead of the second pointer, that is where you stop. Because if you realize, what did you do? You covered first half with the first pointer and the second half with your second pointer, right? So you have completed your entire string and you can safely say that yes, this string is a palindrome. Now try to think of an example where this fails. For example, I have changed my string now, right? Currently, both of these characters match. You are good. Now move one step ahead. As soon as you see this, E and C are not the same, right? So that's it. You can stop right over here and say that this string is not a palindrome. So this is a basic idea how you can write an efficient algorithm to identify if a given sequence is palindrome or not. Let us quickly do a dry run of the code and see how it is working in action. On the left side of your screen, you have the actual code that can identify if a given string is palindrome or not. And on the right, I have the sample string that is passed in as an input parameter to the function valid palindrome. So if this string will be a palindrome, this will return true. Otherwise, it is going to return false. So how does the dry run look like? First of all, we have to create our two pointers, right? The left pointer starts at zero and the right pointer, it starts at the very end, right? S dot length minus one. So this is how I am pointing two of my pointers, correct? And if you remember from our previous example, when did we have to stop? We had to stop when the left pointer was ahead of the right pointer. That is exactly what we do. We start a while loop where we will compare all the characters one by one. And this loop will run until the value of left is less than right. So until this pointer is behind my second pointer, you will keep on doing these operations. And what do you do over here? You compare both of them, right? So if both these characters are the same, you advance the left pointer by one place and you decrement the right pointer by one place. So right now, R and R are same. So these two pointers will move like this. This loop will continue on and you will keep on comparing characters at any instance. If these characters are not same, for example, let us say this was an X. Now this if condition will fail and you can simply return a false because you know that, Hey, this string is not a palindrome. If you compare all the characters and you exit out of this entire loop, you know that all of these characters are same and I can safely return a true. That means this string was a palindrome, right? This is a basic and a efficient algorithm that is used to identify if a given sequence or a string is palindrome or not. If you notice, this algorithm works in a time complexity of order of n and it does not take any extra space to arrive at a solution, right? So this is very efficient. Now there will be a lot of problems that will use the same algorithm but they will try to twist and turn and make it tricky. But remember, if your basics are good, you will be easily able to write a correct solution. Let us look at some of the sample problems that can be solved using this algorithm. For example, I have this problem on lead code, palindrome number, right? So basically you are given a number and you have to determine if it is a palindrome or not. So if you look at the test cases, one is one to one, this is a palindrome, so you return a true. 
Look at the other number. This is minus 1 to 1. And this is false. Why? Because if you read from the left, you get minus and then 1 and then 2 and then 1. Right? But if you read from the right, you will get 1, 2, 1 and then a minus. So they are not the same. But take care. For this problem, you have to return a false. But it could be possible that when you see this question in an interview, they ask you that, hey, forget the sign. You just have to tell me if the number is palindrome or not. In that case, you will first remove this minus symbol and then proceed ahead with your solution, right? The third example is once again very basic. The number is 10. If you read it from the left, if you read it from the right, they are different. So once again, you return a false. So this is one example that involves numbers. We have one more problem available that is actually based on strings. That is valid palindrome. So once again, the tricky part about this problem is they have included all of these spaces as well, right? And all of these special symbols also. And the problem requires you that you ignore all of these special conditions and then tell me, is this string a palindrome or not? So if you just look at the string, it looks like this is not a palindrome. Because when I'm reading from the left, I'm getting A, then a space, then man, then a comma, right. But if you read it from the right direction, you are getting strings like A, M, A, N, A, P, right? This is not the same. But according to the problem statement, you have to ignore all the punctuation marks and all the spaces and even the case as well. So you have to treat this capital P as a small p. And you have to forget these spaces and these colons. Now, what does your string become? If you notice, your string becomes something like this. You have trimmed out everything. And this string is a palindrome. This is the same if you read it from the left. And this is the same if you read it from the right. Just understand what I'm trying to say. If your basic knowledge of identifying a palindrome, that is solid, then all of these are just trickeries that can confuse you. In this problem, you just have to remove all the punctuation marks and then apply the same logic and then just return a true or a false, right? So just keep this in mind when you're approaching all of your problems. Similarly, you have your second examples. Here you see race a car. We know that race car is a palindrome, but race a car is not a palindrome, right? Because it is different from the left and different from the right. So these are some basic examples on how you would find a problem on palindromes. All I want to say is that just keep your basics solid and then you will be able to tackle easy problems that involve a palindrome algorithm. I hope I was able to give you some good insight about palindromes. As for my final thoughts, I just want to say that whenever you see problems during an interview, there are a lot of similar concepts. You have ambigrams, you have pangrams, you have anagrams, and you have palindromes. So most of these concepts are based upon sequences and the arrangement of these characters. So do not confuse one with the other. It is also a good idea so that you can clarify this with your interviewer. I'm also planning to make more videos on it so it becomes even more clear. So while going through this video, did you face any problems? Or just tell me what all problems have you found out that involves palindromes? It will become a very good collection and it will be helpful for any one of us. As a reminder, if you found this video helpful, please do consider subscribing to my channel and share this video with your friends. This motivates me to make more and more such videos where I can simplify programming concepts for you. Also, a huge shout out to all the members who support my channel. This really keeps me going. Keep letting me know what other problems you want me to solve next. Until then, see ya.